A very good afternoon to everybody. Thanks for clicking on to the Monday edition of Hogan's European Outlook. Did you get the chance to see Aiden's interview with myself? Uh, that was released back on Saturday. I certainly did enjoy getting the chance to speak to him and learn a little bit more about his um, the, the development of his interest in the weather and then taking that on to become a professional meteorologist at the Met Office. Do check that out. The link is in the description below today's video. Also, the um, live stream yesterday afternoon, that was a pretty exciting one and enjoyable as well. So it was a busy weekend just gone here on the channel and a very busy weekend coming up this weekend as we have the release of the 2024 summer forecast. It will be live here on the channel at 4 p.m. on Sunday the 26th of May. So I hope you can join me for that. Um, it should be a very interesting one indeed. Sun is shining across many areas of the country today, but that is about to change as we move through the next few days as an area of low pressure developing over the near continent will exert its influence on our weather as we move from tomorrow into Wednesday. Continuing to keep an eye on the MJO as it uh, continues to try and move into a more amplified phase four. And that can promote um, region across Western Europe, Eastern North America, and uh, the continuation of um, high pressure largely dominating the pattern, give or take a few blips here and there. Before we continue with the video, hit that like button, share with your friends and family, and subscribe. I do greatly appreciate that. Uh, this is an interesting tweet here by World Climate Service released uh, a couple of days ago showing the percentage of years with above a, a with above trend 500 millibar height similar to the North Atlantic sea surface temperatures in the March through April period. So this is the um the years that closely match the North Atlantic sea surface temperature profile of this year. So 2023, 1967, 2017, 2008, 1953, 2020, 1998, 1962, 2007, and 1999. So this is the current sea surface temperature anomalies based on a similar uh, type of profile back in these years. And this was the upper air pattern um, when you merge all these years together, generally dominated by an area of low pressure centered over the North Sea but encompassing the UK and Ireland, that would certainly be a non-descript uh, non type of summer. It was a hard one to get out. Uh, this is also a percentage of years with above uh, average trend. The two meter temperature are normally similar to the current sea surface temperatures of the North Atlantic. And you can see here that we've got a largely warmer than average Europe. Ireland, interestingly enough, is below average and uh, largely close to the the average across the majority of the UK, with the exceptions of the southeast, and no surprise, it is indicating a rather wet June through August period. So I thought that was interesting to show you. Another interesting thing to point out is this was the 500 millibar pattern for this year between the 1st of March and the 14th of May. So uh, the you know three quarters of this spring season. This is the upper air pattern, and it's been dominated by Atlantic low pressure, uh, incorporating the UK and Ireland. And uh, courtesy of this type of pattern, Central and Western Europe on the whole is actually looking pretty decent with regards to uh, the drought situation. So Eastern Iberia is uh, obviously in quite a bad state with regards to rainfall anomaly and low soil moisture content. Much of Italy is actually running um, quite dry. The Balkan region of Europe, Turkey, and even eastern Ukraine is uh, showing uh, significant uh, rainfall deficits. But the heart of Europe is actually looking fairly decent. France is looking very, very good indeed, thanks to a wet winter and a wet spring. And the, the vast majority of the UK and Ireland is looking fairly decent as well. So what's important to remember is that we are now entering the stage of a uh, of a uh, greatest uh, evaporative uh, cooling rates and obviously the the level of um evaporation drawing moisture out of the ground and into the atmosphere as you've got that very strong 
sunshine at this time of the year. And as we progress through the next few months, it's it's good to see that you know the heart of Western and Central Europe is looking fairly decent with regards to uh, available moisture within these soils. Uh, I just thought that would be quite interesting to show you. Um, I also showed you in in the live stream yesterday how July of last year, uh, many areas of Europe, including the UK, including much of Scandinavia, the heart of Europe actually looking in quite bad state, low. Um, levels of soil moisture and uh, we certainly were not in a particularly great state back in the middle of the summer last year. Scandinavia interesting enough actually there's been a persistent area of high pressure up in this part of the world in recent times. Western Iceland also not looking particularly great either in terms of, uh, of drought conditions potentially developing into the early portions of the summer. But generally, it's looking fairly decent in terms of soil moisture content. Now, let's take it further and look at the, uh, this is the upcoming seven days of the GFS extended for the upper air pattern. So you can see that we've got that uh, continuation of uh, high pressure over Scandinavia, over Northern Europe. We've got low pressure down across the southwest of the continent. Uh, areas of low pressure up until now has generally been attacking more southern areas of the UK, drier further north and it's a uh, thanks to uh, a block and high over low pressure quite often at this time of year you get an area of low pressure over biscay the highest heights uh, to the north of the uk and up into the norwegian sea as we play through this uh, this uh, loop you can actually see what takes place that area of high pressure kind of regains control We've got really not much in the way of troughiness seen by the GFS extended. So this is taking us out to the final days of May, beginning of meteorological summer. And you can see that as we move towards the period between the 1st and the 8th of June, so this is week one of summer, you can see that we've got um, neutral heights to the south, which indicate to me that low pressure may be present around the Bay of Biscay and try to exert um, moisture and influence from the south strongest heights compared to average further north so we may maintain what we've already seen through much of may remember it's been a record warm first 16 days of the month and slightly drier than average i know there's parts of england and wales even ireland that may uh, kind of scratch their head at that thinking how the heck has it been dry we've seen uh, a significant amount of rain in parts of england wales and ireland but a lot less in the way of rain across northern uk like I've said it several times over now, there's only been 11 millimetres of rain fallen during May so far. And you can count in one hand the days that we've had measurable rainfall. But as we play through this, you can see that that, um, that neutral um, anomaly continues to try and uh, lift further north over the UK. Uh, and then it gets pushed back south and it basically becomes uh, nondescript once again. If we look at the... Um, uh, precipitation anomaly for the upcoming seven day period you can see that we actually have slightly wet than average conditions across far eastern scotland here drier than average across the west slightly wet than average across ireland but notice here central europe we've got a lot of rainfall to come over the next week to 10 days here as low pressure is uh, generally stuck in this region of the continent uh, higher pressure further north keeping that low kind of uh, suppressed to the south as we play it through the loop, you can see that we actually turn slightly wetter than average as heights start to lower over the UK and over Ireland. And then it looks as if with heights coming back up, we then see a drier than average pattern. And this is obviously the period as we move through the first week of uh, June and meteorological summer. Uh, looking finally at the uh, temperature anomalies here for the same period, Week one looks like this here, so slightly warmer than average uh, across northern England, Scotland. Uh, we've got average conditions closer to uh, across the bulk of England, Wales. As we play through this loop, you can see here that we actually start to see a, a little bit of a, a cooler than average showing up across Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, and then marginally warmer than average across the, the, the rest of the British Isles here with close to average conditions. Then we actually turn slightly cooler than average as we move through the period between the 4th and the 11th of uh, June, which is quite interesting. And then as we continue to play it through, it doesn't look as if, it, if it's a particularly warm situation through the first week to 10 days 
of uh, of June. Looking at the rainfall, now this is going to be quite interesting to follow over the next few days here as we've got an area of low pressure developing over the near continent. What that's going to do is it's going to bring uh, a fairly wet pattern to particularly the east and north of the UK, it looks like. Now, there's still levels of uncertainty in terms of how far that area of low pressure moves uh, to the west or to the north, but it looks as if it kind of drifts over the North Sea and exerts a lot of uh, heavy persistent rain. We're going to probably increase winds as well, which has not been a factor in recent times as high pressure has been. We've actually been in a, in a bit of a low, no man's land, really. Neither low pressure nor high pressure. We've kind of been stuck in that kind of uh, in between, so to speak, in recent times. But you notice here that we increased the rainfall seen by the GFS. This is total accumulated precipitation. As we move in through the course of Wednesday, it looks as if the GFS is indicating some wet conditions across northwestern England and then uh, into the eastern central belt up the eastern side of Scotland. That is likely where we see the heaviest rain totals. We've also got a swathe of heavy rainfall between uh, the kind of Dublin area up towards the northwest of the Republic, western parts of Northern Ireland, up into Donegal as well. But look at this here. Look at the heavy rains now showing up across the far north of the UK mainland. So Caithness, Sutherland, Rosshire, we could see some of the biggest rainfall totals. Also up that east coast of England, uh, parts of Lincolnshire, uh, Yorkshire, into Tyneside, the borders, um, and then all the way up through, uh, you know, the Lothians, Fife, Tayside, Grampian. We could see some fairly heavy rainfall totals as we move through Wednesday and into Thursday. So, like I say, and look at the amount of rain that we're expecting over northern Italy, the Alpine countries, and then central Europe, France, also seeing some heavy rainfall. This is also going to do uh, a lot of good in terms of wetting those soils up. It should hopefully temper the heat, possibly across parts of France um, during the at least early portions of this summer. Depends on how much rain we get through the first half of summer. Will these soils then start to dry out if we start to see a, a you know a more dominant area of high pressure developing, especially June into July when you've got high pressure, you really can quickly dry out uh, those soils. Um, but certainly at the moment we're looking fairly healthy in terms of soil moisture content. Let's look at the overview chart of the model here, and we can see what takes place. So there's that area of low pressure trying to develop across the continent very very messy picture across the majority of europe actually we've got a lot of showers uh, developing here some flooding um, in parts of italy germany for example i showed you that in yesterday's live stream uh, very similar actually to what we've seen back may last year when we had uh, according to some sources the wettest may uh, in 70 years for parts of italy last year uh, not quite as extreme, but nonetheless, we are seeing some fairly disturbed weather. Low pressure continuing to linger over parts of Italy, the Balkan region, and into the heart of Europe. So as we play through this, this is uh, during the course of tomorrow afternoon, we are going to see outbreaks of uh, showers developing. As heights lower over Ireland and uh, you know parts of the UK as well, especially across England and Wales to start with, we are going to see the atmosphere become a little bit more unstable. Heights lower. A little bit of fresh air in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere that encourages the production of shower activity, localized thunderstorms in those, uh, you know, underneath those uh, thunderstorms, you could see a significant amount of rain in a very short space of time. It stays largely dry across the northern half of the UK during the course of tomorrow. And then if you notice and pay close attention, we've got this area of low pressure developing over the low countries here. We've got some heavy showers breaking out across parts of England and Wales, as you can see, Northern Ireland, the Republic of Ireland as well. And then it's as that area of low pressure then develops, exact track, exact exact depth, it all remains open to question. But you notice here that we've got a hang back, so to speak, with this low. It's actually staying over the, the near continent, according to this run of the GFS at least. But we've got a lot of moisture then getting spread north and northwestwards over the uh, northern England in the southern and central Scotland. And then as we continue to play through the, the area of low pressure itself, still stays 
uh, pressure at, at the center still above a thousand millibars so it's not a particularly deep area of low pressure at this stage but nonetheless this is uh, a 15 utc on wednesday afternoon and then you can see the low then moving towards the aberdeenshire coast here and it's really on that northern flank where you could have some fairly stiff east uh, winds coming in off the north sea and fairly miserable conditions. This is something we have not seen during the month of May so far, especially in this part of the country where you've got the lowest rainfall amounts compared to much of England and Wales, for example. This is going to be a bit of a shock to the system, actually, because it's been very warm and it's been quite sunny in this part of the UK in recent times. Remember the warmest temperatures uh, across the UK this month has been predominantly focused over the northern UK. So you notice here this area of low pressure kind of lingers on Wednesday into the early portions of Thursday. That may uh, continue to see some fairly heavy and persistent rain. It just depends on the, uh, on, on the finer details of this low. And then it looks as if we have higher pressure regaining control of the UK and Ireland airspace towards the end of this week and into the early portions of next week, keeping our eyes closely fixed on this frontal system that is associated with a low up near Iceland. That is going to try to exert its influence through Ireland, Northern Ireland and into the Western UK as we move through the course of the weekend. But according to the GFS anyway, it looks as if this front weakens considerably as it moves east across the UK and Ireland. High pressure, um, coming a little bit more, uh, it kind of sucks the, the moisture out of the front according to this latest run. And then as we play through the loop, you notice here that high pressure is generally fighting off any significant area of low pressure and rainfall. Towards the very end of the month and into the early portions of June, you notice here that the um, we've got an area of low pressure just to the west of uh, Portugal. We've got the strongest heights to the north of the UK and a bit of a northeasterly airflow associated with this. This is a long way out, obviously, so you have to take this with a large grain of salt. So we'll wait and see what happens. Let's have a look finally at the ECMWF. For the same time frame, look at the details with regards to this area of low pressure. Lots of showers blown up over the continent, as was seen in the GFS run. As we continue to play through the course of tomorrow, there's those showers breaking out, especially across Ireland and Northern Ireland here. Some very heavy downpours, lots of heavy downpours associated over France, over Northern Iberia as well, where temperatures have not really been anything to write home about for the mid to uh, late May standards anyway. Then, according to the ECMWF, still have those showers developing across a, quite a wide area of the UK during the course of tomorrow. There's that area of low pressure uh, moving uh, its uh, heavy and persistent rain out of the low countries across the North Sea into parts of northern Norfolk, um, Suffolk, for it possibly uh, staying to the south of this main band, get it moving up into uh, parts of uh, Lincolnshire, Yorkshire. And then it lifts across northern England and then sweeps its way northwards across Scotland here. As that the centre of low pressure then stays generally just to the east of the borders, you've got the heaviest and most persistent rain, strong onshore winds on the northern flank of that low. And again, like the GFS, the heaviest rainfall will be in the driest areas of the UK for the month of May so far. And this May persist for several hours during the course of Wednesday into early Thursday and it depends on this low and how it uh, act, you know, acts and behaves uh, as we move towards the second half of the week. It'll be interesting to see. You notice here that the heights are starting to come up and we lose the shower activity, we lose the heavy persistent rain and actually it's, you know, Saturday is looking fairly decent. A few showers here and there but generally speaking it looks as if it's uh, largely sunny and fairly pleasant in that sunshine for obviously the time of the year. And then as we move towards the uh, latter half of Sunday, there's that uh, frontal system associated with low pressure moving across Ireland and Northern Ireland into the western side of Scotland and England and Wales. But notice like the GFS, a lot of that moisture gets uh, sucked out as the uh, pressure field starts to rise. We start to lose uh, the potency of that front as it uh, edges in from the west. And then you notice here that the ECMWF has high pressure replacing that low pressure 
and we've got drier and more settled conditions towards the very end of this month. So, uh, yeah, interesting upcoming week to come in terms of rainfall. Welcome, especially for northern areas of the British Isles. And then as we move towards the weekend, things settle down once again. So thanks for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit that like button, share with your friends and family, and subscribe to the channel. Lots of interesting content to come this week. And like I've already said, the summer forecast will be released this upcoming weekend. So I hope you can stay tuned for that. Enjoy the rest of your Monday. See you tomorrow with more. Bye for now.